now in the final five. My guest tonight is a former official with the Department of Homeland Security who wrote the bestseller Blowback, a warning to save democracy from Trump's revenge. We talked to, with him last year when the book came out. A lot has changed since then. Blowback is now out in paperback. So let's welcome back to the show Miles Taylor up late with me tonight here on the final five. Miles, good to see you again. Great to be with you, Jim. Last year when we talked, uh, I, I believe the line that you said was Trump's going to be on the ballot no matter what, whether he is or not. Uh, clearly, he is going to secure this nomination. It's going to be a rematch between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So from the time we talked last year to now, uh, what has changed about the dynamic going into 2024? Well, first, Jim, the obvious, it's the rematch that absolutely none of us want. I, I can't think of anyone who's excited about this race. But much more significantly, Jim, I think we've seen Donald Trump go out there and validate a lot of things that were in that first edition of blowback. And that's one of the reasons why we had to go update this for the 2024 election, is what, at the time, Trump's aides criticized me for as hyperbolic and overstating his plans uh, turns out to be exactly what his plans are. So he's validated a lot of things that are in the book, including about his plans to investigate political enemies and uh, to detonate institutions of government. Uh, but I think more significantly, what's changed is the American people are waking up to the fact that there really aren't going to be real alternatives this election cycle. And we're put back uh, many of us who are conservatives in a very difficult position. So that's, I think, the wake up call that we're realizing as a country is that we don't have great options to get out of this political malaise. And, and my message to Americans is we need to think long and hard about the reality of a Trump second term uh, before we go to the ballot box. One of the things you've talked about is what not just a, a Trump second term would look like, but the people who are around him in his universe and, and what that would look like. Because in 2016, you know, he was surrounded, he was encouraged to surround himself with people like Mike Pence, people who were trusted figures in the conservative movement and in the Republican Party. Uh, we have moved far beyond uh, the likes of people like uh, the former vice president in terms of who the president would likely tap for some of these positions. Well, th that's absolutely right, Jim. And, and, and conservatives, liberals, doesn't matter your political position, you should be worried about this. There's never been this many people who worked for a president of the United States who have come out, who have come out and warned about what that individual will do if reelected to office. And one of the things that people from Mike Pence to myself and others are warning about is that Donald Trump will surround himself with people who will say yes to anything. That's his plan. He grew very frustrated at the end of his first term that he had folks around him that regularly had to remind him that his ideas that he would propose were against the law and oftentimes illegal and unconstitutional ideas that were stopped because the lawyers usually were the last line of defense to say, Mr. President, you'll get impeached again, or people could go to jail for this. Those folks won't be around in a second term. Donald Trump wants to bring in folks who end up saying yes. And I think that's deeply alarming. And I'll say one other thing about that, Jim. You know, some of the president's views that I, ex that I experienced, I really felt were anti-conservative. I mean, he had this animosity towards law enforcement. We've always been a, a back-the-blue party uh, in the Republican Party, but he wanted to detonate uh, federal law enforcement agencies. He had very uh, disturbing opinions about America's mi military veterans, who he called lazy malingerers. Uh, and he thought of U.S. troops as boneheads. I mean, these these are not positions of a conservative. And I think you see that with lots of other Trump appointees who have spoken out. And again, uh, not least of which is his own vice president of the United States, Mike Pence, who has disavowed Donald Trump now time and again. Uh, and but, but he did that fairly he was more vocal about it more recently. I mean, he made his most forceful statement about him just a couple of months ago on Fox News. You, uh, when you were in the administration, you wrote a warning. You were anonymous. Eventually, you, you unmasked yourself as Miles Taylor. I mean, th there had been criticism coming from inside the House in the past. But in the, in the case of Mike Pence, uh, do you think that he would have served his country better had he been more vocal earlier than he was? Well, look, it, it's never too late to do the right thing. And if I throw a stone at Mike Pence right now for waiting too long, I've got to do the same thing to myself. Because if there's one thing, Jim, that I regret, it's that I didn't come forward even sooner. Now, I was in that early crop of officials to go public, but I realized when I did 
that it provided air cover for more people who had the same concerns, who harbored the same alarm about the president to also do the same thing. And so I think by more of us coming out earlier, uh, we could have really uh, you know, made it possible for even more people to join that cohort. I'll just say, I'm glad Mike Pence is saying these things now. They're the things that everyone, I mean everyone I knew in Donald Trump's cabinet was saying privately around him. Now it's their responsibility to let the American people know what their experience was like with this man before they go to the polls and decide whether to rehire him for the presidency. Miles, uh, the, the right to a, a secret ballot and, and to cast your conscience is, is sacred in this country, and we know that. And there are a lot of people who will say, I will not vote for Donald Trump, uh, I will not vote for Joe Biden. And you mentioned just that what, what has come down to a binary choice with, with RFK Jr. thrown into the mix there. Uh, do, do, you, do, you vote for, do you vote for one or the other, or do you leave it blank, or is that something you keep to yourself? Uh, Jim, my honest recommendation for a Republican that can't flip to the other side and, and decide to pull the lever for a Democrat, and I get it, but my recommendation would be, you know, write in the name of your, uh, you know, your favorite family member as long as they're constitutionally eligible to be president of the United States. That is better than giving this man a second term in office because the damage that would be done to our democratic institutions uh, would be remarkable. And I think it will change American lives in ways that folks don't understand in their everyday lives because the government won't be operating to serve you. It will be operating to serve him. And whether you're a Democrat or Republican, that's not how we want our government to operate. The book is blowback. It's out in paperback. The author is Miles Taylor. Joining me again, Miles, good to see you again. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Jim. And the final five is back after this.